Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Art Around Houston. Today I'm filming at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. First, I'd like to thank the museum for letting me film inside their wonderful sharks exhibit. Second, I apologize if the video wobbles in and out of focus. The exhibit hall had very dim lighting in some areas and that made it difficult for my camera to focus properly. The first room in the exhibit had a large screen showing footage of sharks and other sea creatures. It made me feel like I was standing inside an aquarium. It also had a lot of information about different types of sharks and several life-size sculptures. There was also this really cool head that let you see through the eyes of a hammerhead shark. There was one display with examples of shark egg cases. I think they look like alien eggs, like something out of a sci-fi movie. One area was devoted to prehistoric sharks, and there were some really strange looking ones. This animated light shark was swimming around the floor. I kept seeing it out of the corner of my eye and jumping. There were a few replica fossils that I was allowed to touch. Eyes of modern basket sharks. With up to 16 inches. The unusual jaw of this shark was attached, but not used to the cartilaginous skull. This tooth embedded in a vertebra was especially interesting. There was a group of kids there at the same time I was, and as you can guess, they loved the tanks where you could reach in and touch various sea creatures. There was a shallow tank with horseshoe crabs and starfish, and a deeper tank with stingrays and small sharks. I filmed about 10 failed attempts at touching a stingray before I was finally able to put my finger on one. This life-size sculpture of a megalodon shark is going to be the subject of my sketch and painting today. I can't say I've ever really been afraid of sharks, but the size of this creature is definitely unnerving. If you notice the color of the light changing rapidly, that's because this is time-lapsed footage that I sped up to condense the video. I was working on the painting for around an hour, I believe, and in reality, the lights in the exhibit were cycling much more slowly from warm to cool. Once I've finished the sketch, I'm going to start the first wash using this watercolor brush that has a reservoir that holds water inside the brush body. I really like this brush because it means I don't have to carry extra water with me. There's much less mess and much less risk of spilling in a place like the museum. The reservoir doesn't hold a lot of water, but it was more than enough to finish this painting. To wet the brush, all I have to do is squeeze the sides gently. You can find brushes like this fairly cheap on Amazon. If you search for brush, pen, reservoir, you should get a lot of options. You'll notice that I'm building up the darkest areas of the shark's body in layers. In my experience, watercolor tends to dry lighter than it looks when it's wet and first applied to the paper. So to get the values right on that really dark shark skin, I'm brushing in a layer of Payne's Gray and then working in another area while that paint dries. Once it's dry, I'm going to go over it again with another layer of Payne's Gray. You'll see me do this several times during the video. 
I'm adding some grays and pinks to the shark's teeth to show discoloration and shadows. Unless you're in a toothpaste commercial, teeth are rarely pure white. Adding color to them will help these shark teeth look more realistic. I'm also giving the shark some scars around his mouth. The sculpture has the same scars and I assume they're from the shark's prey fighting back during an attack. Here's the finished painting. Thank you again to the museum for letting me film and thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.